Hi, I'm Debbie Nelson with Nixine Publishing, and I am a contributing editor and project manager here on the Mississippi Gulf Coast, United States. And I have the honor and privilege of uh, working with Adrian Nixon, who is our editor in chief, coming to us from Yorkshire, England. We're working on a Graphene 101 series of videos. Adrian, hello, how are you? I'm very well, Debbie, thanks very much. And the honor and privilege is mine talking to you. It's always good fun. Well, I wanted to make sure we brought all of that information in in case someone's tuning in for the first time to find out about our great topic for today, which is graphene oxide. And we know about graphite and then graphene. Now there's graphene oxide. Can you tell us what that's about? Because it sure is connected to an awful lot of the, the research that I've seen. Let, let me put this into context then very briefly, seeing as you've mentioned graphene and graphite. So graphite is made up of lots of layers. Each one of those layers is then made up of this hexagonal chicken wire of carbon atoms connected together. So graphite and graphene are both pure carbon, um, but the graphene is just one of those layers. So graphene is like a playing card um, and graphite is like the deck of cards. So that just sort of sets in context. And because graphene is made of pure carbon, it, um, it's a bit like uh, oil. It just uh, repels water, amongst other things, and has all these fantastic properties. Graphene oxide, however, is different. Um, you could think of graphene oxide and graphene as a little bit like um, iron and iron oxide. Um, iron oxide is rust. Now, right. there the, the analogy sort of fails because Graphene oxide is not like a powdery, weaker form of material than graphene. So when you actually oxidize graphene, you're basically adding oxygen, which is what oxi oxidation means. When you add oxygen into graphene, uh, it changes its properties, but it still keeps a lot of its strength. So we'll talk about some of those details. Yeah, so gra thought, gra graphene never stops surprising us in the way that it behaves differently from other from other things. Yeah, quite right. And and we, we can add all sorts of things to it. Um, they're called functional groups. So uh, when we when some people talk about graphene oxide, you might hear them say it's a functionalized graphene. All it means is it's got oxygen containing functional groups that are added, and that's why it's called functionalized. So to go further, I'll need to talk a little bit over some slides. So may I share my screen? Absolutely. The visual aids are wonderful helps. Good. Yeah, uh, I like talking to pictures too. I'll just minimize our video again, start from the blank screen. Uh, hopefully you can see that. Yep. Good. Yeah. Right. So starting off, we'll start off with the, uh, the graphene and, the graph and graphite. You remember that graphene is just one layer of carbon and graphite is multiple layers of graphene stacked up on top of one another. So we can start either with graphite or graphene. A lot of the time people start with graphite. Um, down here, there's a key. So these little black balls here, are their carbon atoms, as in graphene. And then we've got oxygen atoms and we've got hydrogen atoms. So the oxygen is red and the hydrogen is white. So that's just a key to bear in mind when uh, the slide builds so you can see what's going on, because it actually does get quite complicated. Um, the reaction that we, we do, if there are chemists watching, they'll look at this and sort of have a sharp intake of breath because Potassium permanganate, sulfuric and phosphoric acid, and probably at elevated temperatures. This is really aggressive chemical conditions. This is not your normal chemical reaction. You can think of it as a chemical equivalent of a mugging um, because you have to get really aggressive with graphene to make it react because graphene doesn't really like to react with lots of things. It's a very stable material. So this is concentrated acids, concentrated potassium permanganate, which is an oxidizing agent. And the, when you uh, expose gra graphene and graphite to, the, to these conditions, what happens is the, the chemicals split the, the different layers apart. So it turns graphite into graphene just by uh, the chemistry of the reactions. And what we get is this sheet of graphene, but it's now got all these different functional groups. Can you see all these, Debbie? Yes. So the, the, when you're adding the phosphoric acid and, and all the rest, it's taking the graphene apart from the graphite and adding it. Exactly, yes. It, it does what's called exfoliation. So it takes the uh, individual sheets of graphene and tears them apart 
chemically uh, from the from the graphite, and then the all these different groups get stuck onto the surface of the graphene, and that that makes graphene oxide. And just to have a look at some of these groups. Um, so can you see this one here? It has uh, an oxygen atom and then a hydrogen here. Yes. That particular one is called a hydroxyl group, um, but it's also uh, an alcohol. So uh, that is uh, an OH. Can you see this one here, which is uh, the oxygen just sort of acting like a bridge between two carbon atoms? Yes. Another one here. That's called an epoxy group. You heard of epoxy resins? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, well, that, that's one of the major groups inside the uh, epoxy resin. Here it's just um, the oxygen bridging some of the, um, uh, the graphene. And then over here, can you see this slightly more complicated one where we've got um, these two lines here mean a double bond because uh, oxygen likes to form two bonds. So um, this is CWH, which is um, a carboxylic acid group. And what this does is all these different groups, they, they'll randomly attach on. They start off uh, reacting at the edges, and then as the conditions get more um, aggressive, they'll work towards the center on this flat bit. And the flat bit is called the basal plane, um, just for um, uh, technical sake. So you can see now that we've changed this surface here, which is all carbon, and um, it's not really, it's really oil loving, over to this new material here, which has um, still the basic format of graphene, although the, 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 um, the surface is a little bit more wobbly than uh, this graphic would suggest. Um, but it's covered in all these different functional groups. Now, yeah, can you see that, um, are you familiar with water, Debbie? Absolutely, H2O. Great. So in this case, it would be uh, H2O would look a little bit like one of these, but instead of being stuck on the carbon, uh, the other end of that oxygen would have a hydrogen there. So it would be uh, two hydrogens and oxygen. And can you see that um, if, you're, if you are a water molecule, an H2O molecule, and you look at this surface here, you like to associate with things that look like you. It's called a polar surface, and this is called non-polar. So you can see here, this is quite an alien environment, graph, uh, graphene. So graphene tends to repel water. But when you've got graphene oxide, can you see here that if you're a water molecule, you'll see lots of stuff that looks like you? Yeah, absolutely. So now this explains why graphene oxide mixes with water when graphene doesn't because the surface is covered in groups that look a little bit like water and like to associate with water, and so it will be dispersing water more effectively. That's fantastic. Now I want to know what, what graphene oxide can do. <laughs> right, well, it's nearly as strong as graphene. Um, it is hydrophilic, and that means it, it is compatible with water. And the, uh, the reason that's important, it uh, will come in a minute, uh, graphene is hydrophobic, so it repels water. Um, mm -hmm. So it's quite, it has quite different chemistry there. Um, graphene oxide doesn't conduct electricity, but you can reduce it back to graphene. So you can run the chemical reaction this way and make this stuff, or you can do what's called reduce, uh, put it in reducing conditions, which basically pulls all these groups off and you go back to graphene again. And that's that's really important. And if I stop sharing the screen, I'll show you um, some of this. So you and I saw this in DC, didn't we, when we were there? Yes, yes. This is uh, this is reduced graphene oxide. So this is graphene that's been taken to graphene oxide and then reduced back again to graphene. And it hasn't quite gone the whole way. There's still a little bit of oxidation there. Um, you asked why it was important. Well. Um, when you're making things like um, polymers, uh, some plastics are, tend to have some of those um, OH groups on them, oxygen group containing groups on. So they prefer to mix with water-loving substances rather than oil-loving substances. And if you try and put graphene into a polymer which has a lot of these OH groups on, and a particular example might be um, PVA, polyvinyl alcohol, which you've probably heard of, that would do that sort of thing. You can add graphene into that. If you added graphene into that, um, it likes to, um, uh, the, the PVA is more water loving than oil loving, so the graphene doesn't mix in. Whereas if you take some of the graphene oxide, you've now got all these 
OH groups on, which then uh, are more compatible with the polymer, the PVA polymer, and it blends in and disperses more effectively and makes it stronger. So when you try to add a, uh, just graphene into one polymer, it doesn't make it any better. Graphene oxide, it improves the strength. Okay, and then this this has a lot to do with graphene dispersions then? Spot on, yes. Yes, it does. It's not the whole story. Um, I'll give you another example. Um, actually, we'll have to do a, a recording on this one too, graphene in concrete. Oh, absolutely. That's, that's fascinating. Yeah, I know you've been uh, looking into some of the uh, graphene concrete buildings that have been going up in Mexico, so maybe we could talk about that in a future video. Yes, absolutely. It's, it's, it's fascinating how just a little bit changes everything. Yeah, and a little bit, we're adding 0.03% graphene, and it makes the concrete 25% stronger. Staggering, isn't it? Incredible, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, I did say graphene. Actually, it's graphene oxide that's used with cement and concrete because cement and concrete have all these OH groups in them, and graphene itself doesn't like to um, move in that well, so it won't disperse very well in concrete mixes, but graphene oxide will. So they tend to use graphene oxide in cement and concrete rather than graphene. Oh, that's really smart. Now, um, when, you, when you showed the sample of the, the reduced graphene oxide coming back to, graph, to graphene, and you said that it's not complete completely, like there's a little bit left mm -hmm. in the... Yeah, that, which is why it's called reduced graphene oxide and not graphene, just okay. to make crystal clear what the, what the material is. And how, how does that compare with in strength when you talk um, about it, graphene? Yeah, it, it's difficult to be specific, so we'd have to go down to compare specific materials. But if we say roughly graphene oxide from memory have probably pro have about 80% of the strength of graphene, so it would... Uh, but actually, when you're mixing it with other things to form composites like concrete, then graphene oxide has a massive impact in increasing strength, whereas graphene doesn't work very well because it can't disperse. So the, um, it, it depends. To, to answer that question properly, we'd have to go right down to a specific type of graphene oxide in a specific application. But that, that's roughly what's going on. Yeah, that seems to be the case with so much of... Um graphene in, their app, in the applications is what is it in the specific need so that you can't just say add two tablespoons of this and it works across the board. It doesn't. Again, this is why you need the technologists, the technical service people, uh, the people at universities uh, like Rice and various other places, the graphene flagship and the geek and uh, the MGI to do the science behind this to then point the commercial people in the right direction. So they're working with things that work. And everybody's getting much more of a handle on that these days, which is why graphene is coming past what James Baker calls the tipping point, because it's being used properly, it's being dispersed properly and getting the results that everybody wants. And it's also being made consistently as well. Yes, yes, definitely. And which makes it a lot more cost effective. Yeah. Adrian, thank you again. Um, you always make everything so clear and understandable. Appreciate that. That's what we try and do. Thanks, Debbie. See you next time.